Welcome back to Agronomy Week here at the beautiful Field of Dreams movie site in Dyersville, Iowa. I'm your host, Clint Chaffer, and today we're going to be talking about baseball, agronomy, and all things breeding. As we think about all the different advancements that has happened in both baseball and agronomy, we want to explore some of those topics. As you think about all these different changes over 30 years, what do you think, in your opinion, are the number one changes? Man, we the yields 30 years ago versus today, the, the yield potential, uh, the number of bushels we're taking off of a farm today is just um, incredible. So. I think about our yields today in the geography that I cover, I think we're growing more bushels off of less water. The other thing is that we're planting corn in areas that 30 years ago we never would have dreamed of planting corn. And that's through advancements in things like our drought tolerance, our drought guard gene, um, and, and also things like climate field view where we at a granular level on a field are able to um, find those areas that we can optimize our, our performance um, and, and grow more bushels on those acres that just never would have been planted 30 years ago. So for me, uh, one of the biggest advancements in breeding, especially in cotton, has been pest management. We've seen traits like Bogard uh, come through and be a major game changer for us uh, with pest management, you know, looking at our lepto Lepidoptera species. Um, other traits coming forward, things like Thrive On, are they going to be game changers as well for our growers? Yeah, so I, I mean, I like I like your answer on trades and, and stress tolerance as well. And I think, you know, as I think about the last 30 years, really we've just re improved the agronomics overall because we have improved our genetic rate of gain. So we've been able to select for better disease tolerances, for example. Um, you think about the how how well a product handles disease right now versus what it was 30 years ago. We've really been able to improve our disease tolerances across all, you know, all of our major crops there. Um, we've been able to improve stress tolerance. 30 years ago, if we experienced a drought, we would have seen a lot of barren ears. And we, we have the technology now, we have that stress tolerance now to yield through some of that stress. In my geography, we really push populations. We're pushing populations to where we wouldn't have been able to push populations 30 years ago because we have, we have better roots from traits, we have better stocks, we have better disease tolerance, and we can really push that population. And it's, you know, it's all through everything that we've done for, from a breeding standpoint, stress tolerance, disease tolerance, traits, et cetera, have really allowed us to push that and, and really improve our yields that way. It, we talk about traits a lot. How, does, uh, how, how do you get a trait into a seed? When I think about biotechnology, that's really one of the biggest advancements that we've seen. And really behind that, that idea of biotechnology is all the advancements that we have as far as the techniques to, to improve breeding. And so you think about when we first were creating GMOs, um, we were the, the techniques that we were using versus the precision that we can do now has really changed quite a bit. So um, we have a lot of tools to where we we are better at selecting which genes we want to, first of all, which genes we're interested in, but which genes we also want to put into plants now. And so in the last 30 years, you know, the, the technology that we've used to create GMOs, to create biotech traits for us, has really made pretty big improvements as well. So you think about how long it's taken to, to get the first um, biotech trait versus what we have now, you think of our pipeline, it was just bam, 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 one new tray right after the other because of all of those breeding techniques that have changed in the last 30 years. So really that, that technology has really sped that process up then. I think about in my geography, um, the advancements in breeding and the speed uh, of which we're able to provide solutions, I think about Goss's wilt. So in my territory, Goss's wilt is a disease that, that we deal with. In, when the instance of Goss's will really um, showed up, we had to go back to the drawing board and find those molecular markers and start breeding to specific tolerances against the Goss's wilt. So I, I think that Goss's wilt is a really nice example of a breeding success story. So we had a problem that we didn't have a lot of other solutions for. Goss's wilt is a bacterial disease. So um, we don't have other solutions. Once you have it in your field, that's, that's what you have. It's not like a fungal pathogen where you can use a fungicide. So we have to have good genetic resistance. So when that became a big issue, we had to go back to the drawing board, like Holly said, and really um, 
look, look for those markers, look for those sources of resistance, and integrate them very quickly into our germplasm. And so I, I love talking about the GOS as well, how, how we went from having something that was really susceptible to something that is, is really manageable through genetic resistance, and that's because of the advancements in breeding technology. So really, I mean, as we look at, uh, at all the breeding advancements over the past 30 years, I mean, what's, what's really changed? When I think 30 years ago, we were, we were looking to help increase our yields. Um, today, we're looking at not only taking our yields to the next level, we're also looking at um, solutions around traits that can help us with the diseases um, that we're challenged with, the insect pressure that we have. Um, it's a very multifaceted approach in the breeding pipeline and the breeding technology as opposed to 30 years ago, it was, it was pretty linear in, in terms of what we were doing and now it's, there's a lot of moving parts within um, bringing, bringing those solutions to the market. Our issues have been, been magnified and breeding, you know, things like breeding 3.0 has really given us the ability to magnify the, the technology on the hybrids and varieties. Just like Holly mentioned, we not only can, you know, address an issue from a, uh, a pest standpoint, but now we have weed resistance, pest management, and genetic, you know, selections that address all issues just with one hybrid or variety. Yeah, so I think about breeding, you know, when I, when I went to school, we talked about breeding, and they really talked a lot about how breeding is a numbers game. You want to have those genetic recombinations. And 30 years ago, we were somewhat limited on, on the number of recombinations or combinations that we could get. And now with, with breeding 3.0, with our technology that we have now, we, we can take a much larger pool and funnel it down to, to what we want. Whereas 30 years ago, we were starting with a, a, a maybe more narrow pool, but also we, could, we were limited in the number of crosses that we could make. Now we have the ability to say these inbreds or these varieties have the, the potential genes that we want, and we're going to breed with those, and we just get so many more crosses, so much more testing, and then we can find those, those varieties and really um, in, improve our rate of genetic gain, which is, is ultimately the, the goal of breeding. Is there really a, a difference between uh, looking at some of the, the genetic characteristics versus getting a trait into a seed? I mean, is that a, is that a different process then? Yeah, so, you know, when you look at genetics, that's everything. That's all of the DNA in that, in that soybean or that cotton plant, that corn hybrid. Um, whereas that, that trait is just a single, you know, a single gene that we're inserting or a couple of genes that we're inserting there. And so we're looking at all of, all of the genome, everything that's in there that makes the, makes the plant height, that makes the um, bushiness of the bean, et cetera. Whereas that single trait that we're putting in, we, we insert that into the genome and then it's there. And then we can breed with that and make sure that we have, so we, we start with, we have the good trait and then we make sure that we have the good genetics in those as well. So we can really breed with, with that, those varieties or those inbreds that have the trait that we want and as well as the genetics. So there's kind of two components there where you have um, everything else, the, the drought tolerance, the disease resistance that's, that occurs naturally, and then we put in that trait to, to improve um, pest tolerance or something else in that. Well, if you think about it, a, a grower's not gonna go say, I want your best corn, I just want something that yields. They have additional concerns or challenges, so that may be, I want your highest yielding um, product, here's the soil type that I have. Here, this is continuous corn, I'm, I'm concerned about rootworm. Um, you know, I have high gosses wilt pressure in my area. Those are all different questions that growers are asking for solutions for today that 30 years ago that they weren't. And uh, you know, to, to Wes and Rachel's point, our breeding pipeline is in the speed at which we're able to bring products to market is how we're able to really um, bring those solutions in a, in a short timeline for growers. You know, I think about it from a, a baseball perspective, right, of uh, all the advancements in sports medicine and physical therapy and all that, right, which is a lot about recovery and prevention. And it sounds like a lot of that is what's built into to all these, you know, new breeding advancements. It's really about uh, how do we get a lot of that tolerance and how do we get that ultimate performance out of those products? Yeah, I, I think, you know, one thing that I think about in our breeding program, we have the last 30 years, we've made tremendous um, pr 
progress in our breeding program there. But we're also set up to continue to make really good progress. So when we see a new problem, we have the tools that we can start to address that. So I think about tar spot, for example. It's a relatively new disease for a lot of our geographies. Some of us probably don't have it in, in their geography yet, but we have the breeding tools to where I'm, I'm confident that we're gonna be able to tackle that. It, it takes a few years, breeding takes a few years, but um, you know we have the ability to look for, look for that genetic resistance and really start integrating it into our, our breeding pipeline so that you know, in, in a few years, we, we can have better tolerances to tar spot than we do now. Um, I don't know what the next problem is gonna be, but there's always gonna be a problem, you know, in, in crop production. And we have so many more tools now, I'm confident that we'll be able to tackle those, those problems in the future.